everybody, welcome back to my channel. Hi if you're new. My name's Holly and I am the first time mummy here on YouTube. In today's video I'm going to be kind of chatting through a few different activities and ideas to keep our babies entertained. I know being a parent we're constantly worrying about are we entertaining them enough, are we doing enough with them, how can we help encourage their development and their progress. Um, and to be honest, I think a lot of the time we probably stress over it way more than we need to. An actual fact, they get a lot out of everyday life. They're, they are constantly learning and picking things up. And just the simple things really play a massive, massive part in their development. But there are definitely things that we can do. And there are times where we need our baby to be entertained so they can go off and play independently and enjoy themselves and learn that way and there's also times where we want to activities that we can do together to create a lovely bond and build that relationship and just get a lot of enjoyment out of it so hopefully in this video I'm going to try and cover a range of different topics and um, a range of different activities that are suited to all a few different ages and stages my little girl, Novali, is currently, she's just turned one. So a lot of these activities are more aimed for that age because obviously that's the age I'm working with. But you can definitely adapt and change these to suit different ages and stages. If you don't already know, I've worked in early years for a while before I had my baby girl. So it's definitely something that I've got experience in and something that I'm quite interested and passionate about. So um yeah, I thought this video might be useful. Some of these things I'm taking from my practice in early years and in different childcare settings. Some of this I've just taken learning with Novali at home. Other things have been like Pinterest and other people on Instagram and friends. I've kind of managed to build up a base of kind of activities and things to do through a range of different resources. Not, I can't take the credit for them because um, they're not all mine. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought I would put it all into one video so if you guys are looking it's kind of one place to go to simplify it and just kind of give some ideas basically because it can be a bit daunting and I know how guilty you can feel. So these activities are kind of more home-based activities uh, because that's I think when parents feel the most guilty maybe is because oh, we just have the whole day at home but actually there's loads of things we can do and we're probably already doing without realising that is really helping our baby. And hopefully they're going to be quite low budgeted ideas or even kind of free using things that you've got around the home. Because that's another really, really important thing. Um, going out to classes, doing days out can get really, really expensive. And it's just not doable all the time. So hopefully this will kind of cover that area too. So I've tried to do this in kind of sections. So I've got like main sections and then subsections within those. So I'm hoping this video isn't gonna to be too long. Like I said, it's something I'm quite passionate and interested in. So I might get a bit carried away. The first thing I'm gonna talk about, which sounds really simple, but it's actually really effective is toy rotation. Now I'm pretty sure a lot of us with babies have loads and loads of toys and we don't even know what to do with them. But toy rotation is something that childcare settings definitely put in place um you will notice if your child is in a childcare setting you will go and every few weeks they will have something different out that is because it just you know like adults babies get bored children get bored so this is just helping to pique their interest yes toy rotation the toys will come back around again but it just means they've had a break they've played been playing with something else and now this new thing is new and fresh even though they have played with it before it's something different from what has been out so toy rotation works really really well i'm not saying that you have to have millions of toys and you have to replace them really really frequently but just having a little bit of a shift in toys every now and again can really help storage i know can be a bit of a problem i guess um for some people and it definitely is for us but i just have Novali's toys all either downstairs in her toy storage we've got like um they're like the Ikea cubes, but they're from B&M. And we also then have toys upstairs in like a toy box. So they're the only two. I don't have an additional storage. They're just the things that we have. But what I do is 
I will get certain toys out for her to play with. And yes, she can access the other toys if she wants to go and rummage through them or pick something out herself. And I'm sure as she gets older, this will be definitely something she does more of. But I specifically get out different toys not necessarily every day, not always every few days, depending her interest, how long she's been playing with it, if it's something she's really enjoying, if I've had time, if I can be bothered, if I've thought about it, you know, it can be really relaxed. This is a home environment, it's not a setting. So um, sometimes I have to remind myself of that because I'm in such the, the mindset of providing all of this for children, whereas actually it doesn't have to be strict like that. You just do it as and when and what suits you and what works for you. Uh, but I will get specific toys out and I will change them. So when she comes down, if there's something new out, she'll kind of be interested in that probably. Not for very long because her attention span isn't that long because she's still only little. But her attention span will grow as she gets older. And it's just something that I think works really effectively. Um, and like I said, you don't have to have millions of toys, you don't have to change them all the time. But even things like books, she has some books upstairs that we read at night time and then she has a book box down here. But even just swapping those out, so sometimes she'll have different books at night time and books that she can free flow play, free flow play and grab herself will sometimes be different. And within that, like I said, I'm just basically moving books from one place to another and you can do that with any toy. So what I'm looking at right now in the living room she currently has her ball pit she has her tough tray and her kitchen but just because those stuff are in here doesn't mean that I can't move them around her teepee tent is upstairs in her bedroom so in a couple of weeks time I'm probably going to switch it out I'll bring her teepee tent down here and I will take her ball pit upstairs so again just because it's this it's the same toy but because it's in a different environment and a different place it will pique her interest again uh, we play more downstairs. She doesn't often play. We don't play as much in her room um, because we are down here. You know, when she's older, she'll probably go off to her room and play a bit more. But currently, the living room is our main play area. So those are the things that probably get used the most. So switching them out, changing them around, putting them in a different environment, taking the ball pit outside with the swing and the slide will just, again, it will be something completely different. It will be more like an obstacle course. She'll be in a different environment. She will be in and out of the ball pit just because it's somewhere different. Um, she'll be interested in it again. Whereas if it was just left in here the entire time, she might not go back to it as much, but even just moving it helps. And this would also um, particularly help encourage independent play. Now this is something that I think, again, as parents, we feel really, really guilty for because we're, oh, we just want our child to play for five to 10 minutes just so I can get a job done. But actually this is really, really good for them. Independent play is great. They are exploring, they're learning, they are gaining that independence, testing out limits and boundaries. It's really, really beneficial to them. So don't ever, ever feel guilty for letting them just do an activity and you not being involved. Even if you just sit back and observe and watch what they're doing, you can actually see how much they're getting out of an activity. So, you know, there's obviously a balance and there are some activities that need more supervision and that we actually want to be a part of and get involved in. And I will move on to that in a little while, but um, don't be afraid of independent play and don't be afraid to let your child explore and learn for themselves because that is the only way they're really gonna learn is by testing and trialing it out for themselves. So the second thing that I wanna talk about is actually an item, which is something that we've been using loads recently and really does help with activities and play and development. Um, you don't have to have one of these, you can kind of make do with what you've got, but it's just something that I've noticed we've used and that's a tough tray and we have a stand for our tough tray as well. Um, I've used this so much, I wish I'd got it sooner. We got it for her first birthday and my mum and dad bought it for her. Um, but I think we would have used it a long time before now, um, but we just kind of made do with what we'd had. So with the tough tray, I feel like you like the possibilities are endless with a tough tray. This is something that pretty much every setting has because they are just so great, they're so versatile, and not only does it encourage independent play, which I've just spoken about and I will go into more detail of, and it also does that interactive play, the kind of play where you're doing activities together. The tough tray for me is like our best friend. So what I do 
every night is I will set something up on our tough tray and our tough tray is on a stand because also currently at this point in time she is pulling herself up to standing that is what she's loving doing at the minute and having the tough tray on the stand enables and encourages her to continue to do that it gets her on her feet it is strengthening her legs it is getting her to start cruising and moving around because she wants to get to different items on the tray whereas if your child is slightly younger you can pop it on the floor and put things on there so they can crawl around it it's really versatile and you can adapt it to suit your child and if you don't have a tough tray you don't need to do this you can just set up a corner on the floor or if you've got a little table you know a tough tray isn't essential but it's just something that um, a lot of my activities I use within a lot of my activities so every night I will set up something on the tough tray and like I mentioned earlier with the toy rotation it does change not every day I change it but I just think right so for example to say she's got the blocks on there has she really loved them she has enjoyed them but probably not as much as she did with the yesterday's activity which was like um, i set up a little farm area she has like a, a tractor and ducks um, and a little barn with wooden animals and she absolutely loved that i noticed she was coming back to that really frequently whereas with the building blocks she has but not as much i've sort of had to encourage her to play with it slightly more so the, the blocks I might only leave out for a day or two, whereas the tractor with the animals in the farmyard I could have left out for two or three days because it was, you know, a part of her interest. She was really enjoying it. So I just have a look at my toys in the toy box and think, what can I set up for today? So I'll just give some examples for this because, again, they're probably things that you have laying around and loads of toys that you've been using, but you just don't think of, like, setting them up. So... Like I said, we've had blocks, we've then had like a little farm area set up. I've done musical instruments, so we've had the drums, the xylophone, um, the tambourine, like all of that set up on there. You could do things like books, have some books stood up on there. Nova is obsessed with books, so that would be a really good one. You could have a day of like puzzles and things like that. Even a day with, um, she has like a little tea set, so I might sit, set up a tea set on there with some pretend food and, you know, little cups and things like that. So there are so many things that you can put on the tough tray. And that is one of the main things when she comes down in the morning, that is probably the first thing she will go to. It was the ball pit when that was new, but that's been out for a little while. So that's why I'm thinking of rotating it soon. But because the tough tray has something different on it every, every few days, she often will go to that and because she can stand at it as well she really enjoys that and it's amazing because that gives me 10-15 minutes in the mornings to come down and wash up do the washing up sort some washing out get myself some breakfast get her breakfast sorted because she's interested in that um and she will go back to it throughout the day Another great thing that we use, I use the tough tray for is more of interactive supervised play, whereas that kind of play I will dip in and out with her and, you know, play with her, but she doesn't have to be supervised the entire time. Whereas there are activities that we can do in the tough tray, which I personally love doing because they're normally quite messy, um, a kind of interactive bonding time type play. So, you, you know... A lot of this can be sensory as well so you can in the tough tray the other day we had like drawing i put some paper out and some crayons and she could kind of draw she did need more supervision with this and kind of showing how to do it and um, because all she wanted to do was eat it that's the same with kind of like painting you can do things like that again you can have it on the stand or on the floor whatever works if your baby's slightly littler you can do things such as body paint where you can just strip them down to the nappy, sit them in the middle of the tough tray on the floor and put paint everywhere so they can just explore the textures and the, the feeling of the paint. If your baby loves eating stuff, you can potentially do things like food play and edible paints. These are an awesome option. Never actually tried it with Novely yet. I have done it previously. I haven't tried it with her yet. It's definitely on my list of things to do. After filming this, I might have been able to do this. I don't know. But things such as popping them in the tough tray, putting some baked beans on there, some cooked spaghetti, some tinned tomatoes, some dry Cheerios, and just let them explore. Obviously, you would be there to supervise because you wouldn't want that all along, all over your living room and on your sofa and everything. But it's that exploratory, you know, that exploratory play. They're really getting in there and um, really easy items to use at home. Um, we've done food play, we've done jelly play, where I've um, just 
made some jelly up. I've put some odd little toys in the jelly and I've then let her have, um, obviously put it in the fridge, let it set. And I've then let her explore that. She's absolutely loved it. And it doesn't matter if they put it in their mouth, if you're playing with food. Um, whereas obviously with paint and crayons, I think you have to be a little bit more careful with that. The kind of thing she loves, you can do um, sensory like setups if you're really going for it. Um, you know, you can blend up some Cheerios or some cereal to make it into like edible sand. You could then do like get some blue jelly and put some like ducks or fish or something in it. So you could then have like the beach or you could make a pond setting um, with different creatures in there. The possibilities are actually endless. <laughs> um, and like I said, you don't have to have a tough tray for this. You can just have any type of container. But the tough tray for me is just it really works because it's just so versatile, something to put all that kind of stuff in. There's also um, an activity that I've done before, which was called something like soapy sea foam. So it's basically whisking up, again, you can do it with like chickpeas, um, tin chickpeas, like the, um, the liquid that's with that, you can froth it up, you can make that into a foam. So again, it's safe for them to eat and pop that in there with, you know, some blue food coloring to make it look like the sea. You can put some fish in there. You can even do a lot of these activities in the bath if you wanted to as well. These kind of messy ones, you can do them outside. If you've got a paddling pool, you can do it in there. Like, it's just kind of thinking outside of the box, really. But there are so many activities, um, uh, but a lot of them are messy. But that doesn't bother me. I love being creative and getting messy with them, but you just have to be prepared that it can get a bit crazy. Again, you can do like a sensory nature kind of thing. So you could... Um, base it upon seasonal such as if it's turning into autumn we've got some of the crunchy leaves put that in there with some pine cones and some twigs and some stones and maybe a bit of dirt so again they can explore all of those textures and sounds all of that that is just really really good for their learning again obviously supervised um but this is all stuff that you can just grab from the garden you can put some grass in there if it's towards Halloween, you can do like pumpkin play. You can pop some little pumpkins on there for them to explore. You can chop it up, play with all the insides of a pumpkin. Yeah, just get messy, get creative. At Christmas time, you could have um, a sensory Christmas themed with tinsel and wrapping paper. And maybe have like, if you have like a nativity set up with like figurines and stuff like that, be something really fun. And you can just kind of base it upon the time of year and all the babies or the toddler, the child's interests, such as, like I said, Novely loves the farm. She loves the ducks. So she loves that kind of thing. Whereas if your baby, if your child is more into dinosaurs, or fairies, you know, you can just get really creative with it um, and think outside the box. And you can just use everyday items as well. Um, it doesn't have to be spending lots of money. Water play is another top tier activity for us, whether that be in a paddling pool outside because it's really, really hot and we've just got our bath toys out there. Whether that be just in a water filled in a washing up bowl because it's not quite as hot, it's just kind of to splash and play in. Whether it's in the tough tray filled with water, you can then put a load of stuff in the water. Like if you wanted to add leaves and stuff to that as well and sand and mud and all that kind of stuff you can. Um, again, these activities that I was talking about on the tough tray indoors, you can take outside as well and vice versa. So it really, really is um, a really handy I would say a really handy thing to have and to use. I think that's enough about the tough tray. <laughs> I think I've kind of uh, sold that and the ideas that I, I have have with that. But like I said, Pinterest is definitely your friend. Just have a look on Pinterest, it's great. Another thing that I really enjoy doing and is something that is next to no money is a treasure basket or a heuristic basket. These are something, again, that we did a lot in childcare settings. But this is basically, if you've got a basket, preferably it's normally like a wicker wooden basket, but I don't have one of them. So I just tend to use one of the baskets that I store all of her toys in, I just empty it out and, and use that basket. And you basically can just fill it with different household objects for them to explore. Sort of more natural items um, and everyday items. So things such as wooden pegs, 
a wooden spoon. I've then put like a metal whisk in there, some strips of ribbon maybe to explore different textures, some tissue paper. I've got like a, um, a reel of what the ribbon came on. So it's like a cardboard reel. I've popped that in there, like a wooden um, instrument, like tambourine or something like that. It's just something that you can give them and just let them explore. So the best sort of time or um, method of doing this is popping them on the floor, maybe on like um, a fluffy blanket or something. So they've got that kind of texture and that's kind of something already that they're exploring. Uh, with not much else around, you know, you won't have the TV off, sort of all the toys moved to the side, just so they've got the space and the time to really focus in on this activity. Pop the basket down and just let them absolutely explore. We've used like um, kitchen roll tubes and things as well. It's basically just letting them figure stuff out, you know, putting things in and out of each other. It's developing those skills um, and just learning how things work. And surprisingly enough, babies and children just love objects that they're not supposed to play with. So something like this is great. You know, you could pop some key, old keys in there if you've got any lying around, like any like bangles or bracelets and stuff that you don't use, just stuff like that. And um, things that make really good noises, being like bashed together or, you know, clang together. Um, just really let them go for it. This is something that is actually really nice just to sit them down by themselves and take a step back and just watch them because you will just see them the interest that they have. And you don't have to put all of these things in the basket. You can do some one day and some another day. So again, you're piquing their interest. It's not all the same items all the time. Um, but this is a really, really good one. Um, just think about those textures. You can get like bobbly, bouncy balls and things like that. Definitely a high up there activity. Again, you can make this seasonal appropriate. You can kind of do a similar thing as what I was saying earlier. You could do like a Christmas treasure basket, um, a Halloween one with like pretend spiders and like cob, like fake cobwebs or like um, cotton wool. Again, it's just being creative uh, and thinking of what you can add and just using things that you have laying around. Number four would be a story sack. We use, again, use these a lot in childcare settings. So you can either make your own story sack um, or you can actually, I'm pretty sure we definitely can where I live, you can hire these or, um, I don't know where it is, borrow them, take them from the library, take them out from the library and have them for a few weeks and then return them. They have story sacks, story sacks already made so a story sack is basically a story and then within that sack you have the story and then all different props that go along with the book so say like if it was goldilocks and the three bears you would have the book you would probably have like a teddy bear in there with the different teddy bears you'd have a little girl maybe like a spoon or like the bowls of porridge some porridge oats all different things that just relate to the story here comes the ice cream van Pretty sure that's gonna wake Nova up from her nap. The ice cream van never comes around here. Yeah, so it's basically just props that relate to the story. So um, reading books and stories is such a great thing to do with your children anyway, especially from a really young age. Nova absolutely loves books and you know, from day dot we've been reading stories with her. You never, they're never too young to read and look at books. And that's just proven, you know, now because she has an obsession with books. She loves them. Uh, but she's getting to the stage and the age where she wants to be involved in it, understandably. So Story Sack is a really good idea for that because it just means they're involved in it. They can, and they're learning from it, the, the textures and, you know, the different items and relating that item to the book. And, you know, it helps with speech and language and basically everything, all the motor skills, story sacks are just amazing and it would t it means it takes a bit longer reading through the story because if you're just quickly reading through a book and flicking through the pages it goes quite quickly whereas if you're using the props in the story sack and they can get involved or when they get older they can like do the actions of it and it just it's a really good activity and something to do and you can make your own at home you know you can just order a few little bits of amazon that you think would work for the book or again there'll probably be things around your house that you can use um to put in a story sack you can pick your child's favorite book and 
have a great time of it. With that as well, just a trip to the library. I know I said that these are more like home-based activities, but just a trip out to the library is something also really nice to do um, with your babies and children. They do like bounce and rhyme um, classes there as well, but even just going on an afternoon to choose some books and take them home or just have a little read there. There's always, always stuff in libraries and books to take out and have a look at. So again, that's another really nice free activity um, to do if you want to get out of the house. Number five is a really simple one and probably already do it, but that is just singing and instruments. Just really making an effort to sit down with your baby little one and sing, you know, different nursery rhymes, different songs, doing the actions. You can get some instruments involved. This helps, you know, learning beat and rhythm. Um, and you know, with the actions of like wind the bobbin up and Novali loves the Five Little Ducks song. So she's now like doing this and she's like pretending to count with her fingers and she's doing the quack. And it's just amazing how quickly they pick up on these things. And I can literally be anywhere. And if I say, if you're, she'll just start clapping because she knows it's if you're happy and you know it. Um, and it's just that interaction, that eye contact, that language, that bond, you know, they're really, really lovely activities to do together that are so easy. You don't need anything to do it. You just need you and your voice and your hands. And if you wanted to add things like instruments, you can do, if you haven't got any instruments, grab a, a pot, a pan and a wooden spoon because they would love that. She loves playing with stuff like that. Again, or like a metal sieve and like two pan lids as like symbols. You don't have to have instruments. You can improvise with things like that, like a, an old celebrations tub or something like, Again, they love stuff like that. That isn't an actual toy. You can get that in, or if you've got any like finger puppets or like with us, we use the little rubber ducks with the five duck song and they can like jump into, you could then have some water for them to jump into. You don't have to have those props, but you can as well because it just makes it a bit more interesting and um, just a bit different. I think we have a baby waking up, <laughs> which is good timing because I've got one more to talk about. The number six is another one that isn't quite at home. But it's basically just getting out for walks, getting out in the fresh air. This is such an amazing thing to do for you and for your baby, for your child. Like, I d you probably don't realise how much they get out of it for going, you know, for walks. If you go to different locations, you can go to the beach, you can go to woods, the park, you can go into town. To every place, somewhere different. They're in a different surrounding they're picking up new things learning new things I'm really sorry if it's gone dark i think it's about to rain and i'm using natural light them in the push chair or in the carrier or walking beside you again that can all be different you can go out in different weathers so they're experiencing maybe some wind one day the rain if you want to go out in the rain another day or if it's just rained and your child you've got more of a toddler like jumping in puddles the mud that kind of thing again all free just walk out your front door and you can do it and um, spending the time to go up to different objects and feeling you know touching the leaves feeling the sticks looking down at the ground maybe um searching for bugs looking you know for animals if they're slightly smaller just pointing out you know oh a tree oh a dog a squirrel you know different just taking it in even if you do just walk through they're still taking lots in and picking it up. So whatever you kind of do is beneficial to them. So don't ever feel, again, don't ever feel guilty if you just need to get out of the house, you need some time, go grab yourself a coffee, chuck them in the push chair and go for a walk. Like, I don't know about your children as well, but nine times out of 10, if she's in the push chair, she'll fall asleep. So I've then got like a peaceful half an hour to sit on a bench with my cup of tea and I can just chill out and watch the world go by. And if she's there and awake, she's taking it in, she's learning stuff too, she's people watching. She's in awe of everything going on. So don't ever feel guilty for doing things that are for you because they actually get stuff out of it too. Even if you're just having to go and do the food shop, like that's great because she's learning things. She can help pick things up, move things. That's helping find motor, gross motor by walking, learning that, you know, you're going to the till and that would then help imaginative play in the long run. Like you don't realize all the stuff that you're doing day to day 
is helping them with their development and their progression. So don't ever feel guilty and feel like you're not doing enough if you're not implementing specific activities all the time. Because even though I've spoken about all of these, you don't have to do all of these activities to provide and encourage your children's development and keep them entertained. Like what you're doing with them is enough and they will find fun and they will play and they will learn through pretty much everything they do. That's everything that I can think of. <laughs> Um, that I can cover within activities and encouragement of development but as I said don't take this and think god I need to do every single Holly's got so many activity ideas I, want, I need to do all of them to enable my baby and your child's development that is just not the case I've done this because if uh, if you've got a spare 10-15 minutes and you want to do an activity with your child then these are kind of the ideas um, and if you need 15 minutes where your child can have independent play so you can get some stuff done or you can just sit down and have a cup of tea then hopefully this will help you learning your child's interests and what they enjoy is obviously really helpful because it keeps their attention span another point that i would just have is don't have too much stuff so that's also the same with the toy rotation as in don't have too much stuff out all at once because they'll just be flitting from one thing to another just kind of give them one thing and let them focus on that and then when they're bored of that you can then get something else whereas if you put like 10 different things out they're not going to stay and focus on one because they just can't cope with the fact that there's like a million things for them to do so just um obviously let them have options and whatever works for you and your baby great um you obviously know what's best for your baby for your child but um, sometimes if you think they're struggling with attention and they're just kind of not playing with something for long enough, maybe just reduce the options. I hope you found this video helpful and you've got any kind of ideas from it. Please let me know if you have any activity ideas or if you try any of these, please let me know. Um, definitely follow me on Instagram as well because I post more frequently on there and a few kind of, you know, what me and Novely get up to day to day. I would love to see what you guys get up to. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye. Bye.